Hey guys, Steve Petrato here with my good friend Aaron Shell from the Spectrum team. Today we're going to be talking about radios for FPV. What radio to start with, or if you want an inexpensive radio to a very expensive radio, and also what receivers are needed on board, and the differences between all three that we have to offer. So Aaron, I think the first thing we need to get into immediately is the DXE. As, a, as an inexpensive radio, uh, the DXE really is a nice system for someone that doesn't want to spend more than 100 bucks, right? Right. Well, the DXC excels at being everything you need in a very simple package. It's got great gimbals, it's got all the switches you need, and it's got great performance. So we've actually had some uh, very su good successes winning races with the DXC, and it does everything you need for a, a quad racer or a drone racer. Um, if you're looking to step up with more performance, <coughs> that we've got a lot of uh, available products in the lineup that do really well. But if you just want something simple, the DXC does great. So what are some of the drawbacks of this radio? Obviously, it doesn't have a computer programming in the radio. Right. But you need that iPhone or the Android app, right? Right. Yeah, you can connect to your, your smart device and, and uh, um, get a lot of the functionality that you need to be able to make adjustments and changes for flying various airplanes and whatnot. Okay. Um, yeah, so for quad racing, obviously, a very expensive radio to start with. You do need that adapter to use your iPhone. Mm -hmm. um, it's got it's a full-range full radio. It's a high-power radio, right? So it's going to be in the same level of as a, as a higher-end radio. You don't have that diversity antenna in the back here. That's right. Um, so that's a little, little thing to keep in mind is you won't have a, another diversity antenna. And we'll talk about that on the other radios. Um, but the, the DXE for, for the money is a great radio to start with if you're not willing to spend that much. Let's jump into the next radio now. I'm going to set this one aside. And you know the, the next one I have here is the DX6. Mm -hmm. Now this has kind of been a been a standard in, even in the DX6i days. Right. The DX6 is now the new G2 is the standard in in six channel radios for right. Spectrum. So give me some info on this radio. Well, the DX6 has uh, a really good host of features, including the same kind of software you're going to find across the line with our radios. So if you have a buddy who's got a DX9 or a DX18, all the software works the same. Your friends can help you out, and you can even transfer files across. So in a lot of ways, you can think about, about it as a feature-packed high-end radio, but it's only six channels. So when you compare it to like the DX6i, this radio has miles more features. It's got voice output. It's got wireless trainer. It's got all kinds of advanced programmable features, which they don't necessarily come into play with drone racing, but they're really nice features to have if you want to try different airplanes or helicopters as well. Yeah, so that's an important thing. I think many people start off in, in one segment of the hobby and then move around. Mm -hmm. So having a radio that can do it all at the six-channel limit, of right. course, the DX6 is a great place to go. So if you're looking for a little nice radio with that computer readout right there, uh, very nice gimbals, like you said, voice and everything else, wireless buddy box, I mean, it's a really nice radio. So mm -hmm. that is the DX6. And then the last radio I've got here, and this isn't the last radio in our lineup, but this radio I wanted to bring in because this is what all of our Team Spectrum pilots are flying right now. Mm -hmm. So everybody on Team Spectrum FPV is using the DX9. Most of the guys are flying the DX9 Black, but we've got a standard DX9 here to kind of show you guys this. Yeah. So Aaron, again, this is going to be using the same software as the DX6. It's going to have that wireless buddy box, very nice gimbals on board. Um, is there anything else that we need to know about the 9 that's a little bit different than maybe the DX6? It's got rubber grips where some of the, the lower end radios have plastic grips and it's got sliders on the back so if you're doing things like flaps and uh, sliding canopy or whatnot sure. on, on various airplanes it's got all kinds of other features but uh, for the most part it's about the look and feel as you step into this level of radio it's going to have the same kind of features you're going to find in the DX6, 7 and 8 but it's got additional functionality with the sliders and it's also got um, a little bit more room in the in the battery compartment for a different type of battery. So with sure. the DX6 and, and those radios, the DX6 through 8, it's actually got the, the charger built into the battery. And right. <coughs> with the DX9, it's built into the radio itself, and it's capable of doing different types of batteries like nickel metal hydride and lithium. It does ship with a lithium battery, though. Yeah, you so. know, I, with, uh, with mine, I've got the large LiPo battery in mm -hmm. mine. I, I can leave that thing charged for what feels like a couple weeks yeah, solid. Yeah, definitely. But, uh, with the battery that comes on board, it's definitely good for a weekend. So right. Again, the DX9 being that higher-end higher, higher end radio, the, the same radio all of our team guys are run, running and winning major races with. Yeah. Um, so overall, a fantastic radio lineup. A lot more expensive than the DX6 or the DXE, for that matter, um, but a great radio for FPV racing and beyond. So the next thing I want to talk about is all of our receivers. Now... I've got three receivers here. One of them is still a prototype, but we did release it recently. So let's start on this end. 
um, we have the just a standard spectrum satellite, right? Right. So what? Obviously, a standard satellite. It's not a full range receiver. Right. So, so what are some of the drawbacks there? Well, the remote receiver was originally intended to be part of a system, right. and so when when quad racing started coming around, people started using it for that. But it's not really what it was intended for. Mm -hmm. So well, it does work in many applications. It's a little bit outside of its original design to be using it that way, and so. We started doing something a little bit more purposeful for this type of consumer with this uh, 4648. And the 4648 has uh, diversity with, with coax antennas. So even though it looks like these both have the same kind of antenna, sure. this is actually a dipole where it's got two different sides of the same antenna. Mm -hmm. And this one's actually got two separate antennas. Okay. So they're very different. And um, this one is much more intended for the drone racer where they're able to get the antennas out away from any carbon or metal and right. make a better installation. So the newest Spectrum offering in this segment is the 4649T, which is right now sitting in this printed plastic case that we made for uh, prototype testing. It'll ship in a, a, a finalized case, more like what you're accustomed to seeing. But <coughs> what's exciting about this product is this product was developed from the ground up to be really intended for the drone racer. So it's got telemetry integrated, so you can actually get performance feedback from what the, the reception strength is looking like. Sure. And it's got the, uh, um, the voltage input, where you can get uh, your battery voltage and everything right through that. It's got a lot more opportunities to do more advanced features as well, connecting in with flight controllers. And we're gonna be putting out a document for the developers out there so that they can take this information and make all their flight controllers work with it with That's this awesome. new telemetry protocol. We're excited to have people using this and it's really gonna go a long way because the, with, combined with the voice feedback and all these radios, except for the DXC, it's a very powerful feature. And one of the coolest things that you're gonna see coming is lap timing because this radio system that I'm running right, myself right now, when I pass the gate, the, la the, the radio speaks, sure. tells me the, the lap time, and that's phenomenal. I love it. Awesome. Well, to recap these receivers, Aaron, we've got a Spectrum satellite, which you can use for racing. I would recommend it in long distance applications. Again, like you said, it was intended to be used as part of a system. Right. Many people aren't, so that's where they run into issues. Then you have the 4648, which was intended for FPV racing, right. minus any telemetry application. And this right. is what all of our team guys are running now. And then finally, the, produ the production ones will look better than this 3D printed case, but this is the 4649 telemetry receiver. Mm -hmm. And this thing is rock solid for getting any kind of feedback from your quad and doing cool features like that. Yeah. So guys, if you had any questions about this stuff, hopefully this video gave you a kind of an insight into what receiver to use with your build and what radio to pick and choose uh, when you're out there looking to buy your first radio. So Aaron, thank you so much for coming to the studio today. Anytime, Steve. And guys, have a good one. Enjoy building. Thanks.